Good morning and welcome back to the St. Petersburg Science Festival. My name is Allison Garrett and I sit on the steering committee for the Science Festival. And I also work for NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And we are so happy that you all are here joining us live from your classrooms this morning. Don't forget, as you hear the presentation and think of questions, please submit those because our speaker will have a chance at the end to try to answer some of those questions for you. I'm going to just jump right in right now. Our next speaker presenter is from Eckerd College. And the name of the presentation presentation is Draw Like Escher. The Dutch artist M.C. Escher is one of the pioneers of mathematical art. Bjorn, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Okay, and we dive right in. So the title of this talk is Draw Like Escher famous Dutch artist. Here is an example that's called a morph. So the picture changes from, from the left to the right. It morphs from someone who is starting to run into the right picture at the end, someone who finishes the finishing line. And um, so that's one example of Escher's art but that was made by someone else. That was an advertisement for a marathon. So before we come to the part where we draw like Escher, let's have a short intro about tilings of the plane. So there are many kinds of tilings. Uh, the one on the left, that's the checkerboard tiling. Yeah, you've seen that in, in, on the floor or in your bathroom maybe. And we can make it more complicated, like the second one. That's with squares, regular triangles, and hexagons. Yeah. And then we can make it <clears throat> even more complicated, as you can see it on the right. And I will talk about the last one, which is called a Penrose tiling later. OK, so let's start easy. Suppose this is your bathroom, right? Suppose you want to tile it. Which regular shapes or polygons could you use? So let's have a look. Think about it shortly. Could we use a triangle, the square, the pentagon, or the hexagon? So just, just one of those. Can you use the triangle? Yes. Can we use the square? Yes, we've seen that, right? Can we use the hexagon? Yes. What about the pentagon? Well, the pentagon doesn't work. Why not? So if we, if we put the pentagon, if we, put, if, we, if we look at a corner and we try to fill the corner of a pentagon, uh, we can put three pentagons and a corner, but then there will be a little gap. And there's no way we can fill this gap with another pentagon. Okay. So that's it. That's that's the way how you can figure out which ones work and which ones do not work. You take the pieces and put them together in a corner, and then it, it either works or it doesn't. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you, you discard it. And if, if it works, you, you try more. Okay, and people have done that. People have tiled their bathrooms with triangles, with squares, or with hexagons. So people have also used more advanced tilings or more complicated tilings, where the idea is, or our first idea to be more creative is to use several different shapes. So here's an example. If we use several different regular polygons, so what can we do? Let's have a look. Okay, so there are actually eight possibilities, as you see here on the left. These are called the semi-regular tilings. Um, and you see at each vertex, you have the same, or each corner, you have the same configuration. 
Um, so that that's the condition. Yeah. So, for example, for the first one, at the corner, we have four triangles and one hexagon. Okay, so that would be a nice idea if you want to tile your bathroom. Hmm, we said the, the pentagon doesn't work. The regular, regular one at least. What about an irregular one? So we could deform the pentagon a, a bit so that it, it still has five sides, but maybe of different length. What can we do then? Well, that works. So if we use irregular pentagons, here's an example, people have done that. We can actually tile the floor. And here are a few nice examples. So how, how many are there? And interestingly, that was a topic of research until 2017. There are 15 families of Pentagon tilings. The last one discovered in 2017. Okay, you can find that on, on Wikipedia also. What else could we do? So people have been actually very creative with tilings. Uh, especially in Islamic art. Here is an example of the tomb of Hafiz, Hafiz, the Persian poet of the, the Persian poet of the 14th century. And you can see that that's quite amazing. Then in the 1970s, Roger Penrose, who won also won the Nobel Prize in Physics, he discovered this tiling. And the specialty of this tiling is that it never repeats itself. So you can see certain figures like a star, for example, that comes up at several places of the tiling. But you cannot find a cookie cutter such that you can cut out the region and then like take take copies of that and tile the plane like, like you could do it with squares. Yeah, so it's impossible. So it never repeats itself. And also, there's not just one Penrose tiling, they're actually infinitely many. Yeah. So that's quite amazing. Um, so what did Escher do? The Dutch artist MC Escher pioneered tilings with motives from nature like for example this one on the right so that more that's again a morph it morphs from fish at the bottom up to goose on the top yeah so he he was one of the pioneers and vendors of these kind of tilings here is a little picture of him that he drew himself and today We want to step into his footsteps and learn some of his tricks. So here's another example of an Escher tiling now of a sphere with fishes. We, we won't do that today, but um, there's a lot of mass involved uh, in his tessellations and we want to learn one of his tricks today and draw a tiling on our own. Yeah, thanks to Robert Fathauer, who, um, where, where I took, uh, I, I took the pictures from, from this talk. I took mostly from his book, Translations, Mathematics, Art and Recreation. And let's now move on to the tilings. So you will need this sheet with instructions if not, you can just watch or you can, can just try um, if you can follow. And you need a grid like that. And 
so we want to test we want to tile the, the plane now with a more advanced tiling after turn, put on put on the screen so in the instruction says you should take a, a square which is six times six i take four times four because it's more convenient for me um and yeah you can listen follow along or, or draw your own so and I'll, I'll, I'll give one example. So I take a square four times four, and the idea is I modify the sides such that I get um, a more interesting tiling or a mode. So the first part is, um, is easy. I choose the bottom side and I draw a curve, maybe not too complicated, um, like this one. Now I have to repeat it on the top. Okay, like that. Now I have to choose a curve for the left-hand side. Again, this should not be too complicated, so you can repeat it, yeah? So I go down diagonally, I go back three, and then I go down like that. Now comes the tricky part. I have to repeat it on the other side, but then I have to flip it. So we can draw it on the other side, but then if you use a pencil, you should use a soft pencil so you can, or, or you should draw it softly so you can erase it afterwards. I can erase it here on the screen uh, easily. So I would have to draw it again like that. But now I have to flip it along the middle axis. So what do I get? So I, I went, um, down from this point to this point. I flip it along the middle axis, so I go like that. Then the middle line stays. And then from here, I went from here, I went to this corner. So now I, I do it on the other side. And I can erase here easily what, uh, what I, I didn't uh, need. So I have to erase this one, this one. And now I have a tile, um, my first tiling, my first mode. Now, going up and down, like we had this little square, we just repeat it. So here's another um, four times four square. Draw this one again. I copy everything. So I went two down here, I go two down here, go here, here. I repeat also the other side. Like that. Okay, up and down, it's, it's the same. I, I won't even repeat it. Now comes the tricky part for the next column, for the next square here. I have to flip it around. So if this curve here goes like that, I have to turn it around. Also I have to, have to turn around the bottom. And now, instead of copying the side to the left, I have to copy this side right here. So like that. Okay, and now you see it. So that's, that's uh, now upside down, yeah, it's, it's flipped around. So in this column, I do always the same, I just did one more time. I'm missing this one here, and I'm missing this one here. And that's it. Now the next column is like the first, but we already have the first, so that's easy, yeah? So here's the square again. And then, um, like the first, so I have to copy the side here. Yeah. So uh, like that. If you make a mistake, don't don't worry. Yeah, you can try later. It's a bit more time, maybe. Yeah. Um, just tag along. Let's see what we get. Okay. So and then I I could fill up the paper like that. Now I want to make it nicer. Let's make a little motive. 
And I say, I, I felt, well, this one that looks like a mushroom. Do I draw a mushroom here? On the other side too, that's the same, right? And then I felt like, hmm, in the middle, maybe it would be nice if that was a lizard. So I draw a lizard. It's the T's, big T's, like that. And then I can fill in the details. Maybe it doesn't look like that. I uh, can uh, change a bit the sides. Maybe I want this a bit fatter. Um, maybe the lizard is eating some insect or spider. Yeah. How many legs has a spider? Six? No, eight, right? Eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another spider here. Like that. And then also have to do it here, right? Same. And then maybe I just sketch another lizard here. So here would be another one, right? Oop. And here too. Okay. Okay, so maybe later you have more, more time to, to finish this. And then I could add, add some color maybe. See what the mushroom, top of the mushroom is brown, the head. Like that, right? Okay. Then the lizard, so maybe green, yeah, the different colors, the many different colors of the lizards. And maybe there's yellow eyes. Yellow eyes. Okay, and so that would be the motive. Oh, maybe tease a little, lighten the tease a little. And then you can continue like that. So the trick was flipping in the middle. That's a bit hard, yeah? But if you practice, I'm, I'm sure you, you'll figure it out, yeah? Okay, can I stop myself? Okay, and that's it um, so far. And I'll go back to the screen. Uh, okay, and that's that. Any questions? Bjorn, thank you so much. We have time for maybe one question. And I wanted to know, how did you, um, how do you, did you become interested in this? And, and what what do you do when you're using this at Eckert? Um, so we have a mass art club at Eckert where students can learn okay. things like that. And I came to that because we had a mathematician coming who was doing outreach at schools. And he showed us um, his 3D prints and his things. And I thought, uh, wow, that's so great. Every Everyone must see it. So that's how I came to it. And I can show you another one. That's one I made. So we made these solids. Oh, wow. These Archimedean solids. And the specialty is the mirrors inside. So I can put this over the camera. Oh, wow. 
So you can <laughs> go inside if you want. You're in this mirror. That is yes. wonderful. Okay. Well, what? we so appreciate it. We so appreciate you joining us today. That was fascinating. Thank you. And to see it being drawn and take on different, you know, the lizard versus the mushroom, to stay, see it take on different um, images was so cool. And I know the kids like that, especially the lizard with the spider. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can so take any animals. Yeah. If today. you look online, there are even dolphins and things like that. that that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we're going to wrap it up with Bjorn. And we so appreciate you joining us today. And we appreciate all of our students for joining us today. And we're going to be live in another five minutes. So please join us back here. My name is Allison Garrett. And you are at the St. Pete Science Festival. Thank you.